The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmayo at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, so today we're going to review for the test tomorrow. There will be no regular class meeting tomorrow. Just uh, take your test and it needs to be finished by tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. So with that, who has some questions? Who wants to start? Anybody? No questions? Everybody's good to go? Ready for the test? Oh, this is going to be Whitney. What? Yeah, can you just touch back on the ratios again, like the first part of outcome two? Sure. Uh, proportions. Okay. So you want to look at proportions or ratios or both or what? Uh, like the proportions. Okay. Give me just a second here, and I will get some examples that I can use. Okay. Let's see here. Like number 10. Oh, number 10. Okay. Let's see. Whitney, is that you? Yeah. Okay. Let me let me find your number 10. Give me just a minute. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Whitney, what's your last name? Paul. Oh. oh, I see it. Okay, okay. And it's the six point three to seven point two. What? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I was going to find it, but sure, that works. <laughs> All right. So, um, now this is the ratio. I'm pretty sure I was just trying to remember how to do it correctly. 6.3 to 7.2. Okay. So um, it probably said something like this. Uh, write the ratio 6.3 to 7.2 as a fraction in lowest terms. Yeah. So we'd start with this. We'd multiply by 10 over 10 to get rid of the decimals. Okay. But both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 9. 63 divided by 9 is 7. 72 divided by 9 is 8. So the final ratio would be 7 to 8 or 7 8. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when the decimal is to the thousands, do you times by 1,000 over 1,000? So let's say you had uh, 6.003 over, let's say 7.2. So then you'd multiply the top and the bottom by a thousand. The top would give you this. The bottom, let's see, would give you that. Does that make sense? Oh, wait a minute, this, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Because that would move it three places, and then the bottom, you'd move it three places. And then, of course, you could reduce that, which we can go on with here in a minute. But do you have some questions about what I did there? No, that makes sense. I was just trying to remember it. So each multiple of 10 moves at one place. And then dividing by 10 would move it one place to the left. This reduces because you could take a three out. Uh, let's see, 72 <sighs> divided by three is going to be 2,400. And you can take a three out of that. Oops, didn't like that. Uh, 
Yeah, well, let's see, six. Anyway, let's see, twos and fives. I think that's the final answer there. But anyway, Mike, you, you okay with moving the decimal point? Yeah. All right. Did you want to look at proportions or was that just the, the main thing you were concerned about? Uh, that was the only thing. The only other thing I had was with the getting the area with pi and actually typing the pi into the answer. Ah, okay. So finding pi in the in the assignments. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Um, let's see. Like on the review is number 69. Okay. All right. Let's see how I want to do this. Try to make so that, that all of your pictures aren't in the way of the screen, but what I see on here doesn't always match what the recording sees. Okay, so hey, let's move this up here for now. Can you see question 69? Yeah. Okay. So let's just deal with pi. Ah, so when I open it up, you see right here? Yeah, I see the pi part, but what does it actually do? That's not really an answer. Okay, hang on. Let's do this problem. All right, so. Find the circumference in millimeters and area in square millimeters of the circle below. And the circle, the diameter is four millimeters. So the radius would be two millimeters. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I got the actual answer, but it's the typing it in. Why would you yeah. write? Okay, I'm good. I'm just, yeah, we're gonna get there. All right. So the circumference is pi d, which would be pi times four millimeters, or typically, typically you put the nice number in front. So my answer should be four pi millimeters. That's exact, okay? So here I would put four pi. Now, that is, the correct answer. That is the exact answer. But pi is one of those numbers that it's what's called an irrational number, meaning that you can't write it exactly using a decimal or a fraction or a mixed number. It, if you had, let's say you had a calculator that would go out a thousand places, okay? All right. And you put in pi and then pushed equals, it would fill the screen and still round off at the thousandth place. It just goes on and on and on, kind of like my lecture sometime, okay? So that is the exact answer. Then this little symbol here means approximate answer. And to find the approximate value of pi, we replace pi with 3.14 which again is not exactly pi, it's just an approximation. So then you've got four times 3.14, which is 12.56. But again, that's not an exact answer, that's an approximate answer. So here I put in, let's see, 12.56, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. So when it's, when it's equal, you've got to include pi. When it's approximate, you replace pi with 3.14. Do you want me to do the second part of this problem or, or not? It's up to you. I'm good unless somebody else needs it. Anybody else? Okay. What else would you like to look at? Anybody, anything, just let me know. So there's a lot of information in this chapter. Let's see, what do we, we start out with ratios, 
then proportions, then uh, what is there, percents, and uh, story problems involving percents and proportions, and then it gets into all the unit conversion stuff, working within the American system, the metric system, both systems, temperature, geometry. I know a lot of stuff in there, a lot of stuff. And again, the information that you need should be listed above the problem. So you shouldn't need to memorize any of the formulas or any of the conversions, just how to use them, okay? Anything else you'd like to look at? Could you do a story problem with proportions and percents and stuff since- You betcha, here. okay. All right, let's see here. Do you have some specific ones or you want me to just bring some in? Just bring some in. I don't remember what it was from the homework. Sure, sure, okay. All right, so uh, let's see here. So here is a proportion problem. If a gymnast can do 18 jumping jacks in 20 seconds, how long would it take for him to do 45 jumping jacks if he continued at the same rate? All right, so if a gymnast can do 18 jumping jacks in 20 seconds, how long would it take for him to do 45 jumping jacks. Now, notice that the order was switched. It said 18 in so many seconds, how long would it take to do 45 jumping jacks? It didn't say uh, 18 in 20 seconds. Um, uh, so how many could he do in a certain number of seconds? So you've got to, you got to think in terms of the units, in terms of the rates, since I'm given it in jumping jacks per second, I'm going to write the right side of my proportion in jumping jacks per second. Does that make sense? All right. So now the cross products would be 18x equals 20 times 45. Again, setting the cross products equal. Since the coefficient is a whole number, I will divide both sides by that whole number and reduce it down. On the right side of the equation, I need to simplify this. I suppose I could just punch it all into a calculator. I'm gonna go ahead and do it longhand. 20 over 18 could be written as what? 10 over nine. 45 over nine is five over one, five times 10 is 50. So the question said, how long would it take? It would take 50 seconds. You okay with that? Yes, can you do it where it's not a whole number? Absolutely, let's see here. Uh, ah, here we go. A recipe for snickerdoodles calls for three and three fourths cups of flour for every two cups of sugar. How many cups of sugar are needed if two and a half cups of flour are used? Hmm. Uh, this is still going to have a whole number as a hang on here. Forget that one. Because I assume you want the coefficient of the variable to be something other than a whole number. Yeah, and that one, even though there's mixed. OK, OK, here we go. A recipe for lemon tea cookies. Are you getting hungry? Calls for one and three fourths cups of flour for every three fourths cups of cup of sugar. So one and three fourths cup of flour for every three fourths cup of sugar. How many cups of sugar are needed if two and a third cups of flour are used? Uh, 
All right. Does anybody need me to read through the problem again? So setting the cross products equal, we have one and three fourths time of times x equals three fourths times two and a third. But we need to change the mixed numbers into improper fractions. And I could have done that in this previous, in this step right now, but I'm gonna do it in this next step. So this is seven fourths x equals three fourths times seven thirds. Any question how I got from the mixed numbers to the improper fractions? If you're more comfortable with decimals, can you change them to decimals and work it that way? Well, here's the problem. This would give you 2.3 repeating. As long as there's no repeating decimal, then yes. Okay. Though here's my challenge. If you're more comfortable with decimals, maybe you need to work with fractions more. So you'll get more, I, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, okay, but yeah, as long as you don't have a repeating decimal, but this particular problem does, so that would cause, yeah, you wouldn't be able to deal that. Sorry about that. Okay, now, my variable is x. The coefficient of the variable is 7 fourths, which is a fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 7 fourths, which is 4 sevenths. OK? On the left side of the equation, the 4s reduce down to 1s, the 7s reduce down to 1s. 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 is 1, so I've got 1 times x which is x. I'm not saying that x is the number one. I'm saying that x is one of those x's. So it's one x, okay? Now on the right side, a beautiful thing's gonna happen. The fours reduce, the threes reduce, and the sevens reduce all down to one. So it uses one cup of sugar. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find one that has a decimal or the one that we can convert into a decimal. Uh, so one, this times. Well, okay, this one doesn't have a decimal coefficient, but it does have mixed numbers we can convert to decimals. So let's, let's take a look at this and, and see if this is gonna do. Okay, let's go back to the snickerdoodles. A recipe for snickerdoodles calls for three and three fourths cups of sugar for every two cups of flour. How many cups of sugar uh, are needed if two and a half cups of flour are used? So your cross products would be this. So 2x equals 3 and 3 fourths times 2 and a half. 2x equals, okay. So 3 and 3 fourths is 3.75. Do you want me to go through how I got from three and three fourths? Anybody? Okay. Two and a half is 2.5. So then you divide both sides by two and you'd get, let's see, I've got 3.75 times 2.5 divided by two and I get 4.6875, okay? Which I believe is four and 11 sixteenths. Let's see if that's right. 11 sixteenths, yeah. That looks like four inches. That's supposed to be four eleven sixteenths. 
and that is what uh, cups of sugar. In other words, if, you, if I'd done it using improper fractions, I would have gotten that, but using decimals, you'd get that. Now, let's just do this, okay? Let's take a proportion that has decimals in it. Um, since I'm not seeming to come up with very good examples. So let's say you got that, okay? So now to solve for X, you've got 1.5 X equals 4.8 times 2.1, okay? So you would divide both sides by that decimal coefficient. Then on the calculator, 4.8 times 2.1 divided by 1.5, and I get 6.72. Is that kind of what you were looking for? So, so, something else there? Again, anybody, whatever you want to look at, this is your review day. We can go back as far as you want or, or look at the uh, Yesterday's assignment, whatever you want to um, do. Um, I had a question. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's about yesterday's assignment about the metric system. Um, okay. I was kind of a little stuck on the part where it was talking about seconds and hours, like combined with like we're dealing with like kilometers or okay. miles. Okay. Um, I don't have the problem like right now. But, like, okay, I'm gonna I, like I'm gonna bring it up. Just give me a second here. Okay. Okay, come on. Maybe I should say, give me several seconds. You know, there's metric time where there's 100 minutes in an hour and 100 seconds in a minute. Anybody want to buy, buy that? I, I had a few students convinced of that once. Pretty sad, I know. Okay, <laughs> let's see here. So, Adele. And you said you want to look at it was from the uh, review. Um, not the review, but I think it was like two C two or something. But like, two. I mean, I got I got so far, but like those five problems, whatever, I got kind of confused because like it was dealing with the seconds, the hours, uh huh, uh huh, and combining that with the um, let's say miles, kilometers, or heck leaders yeah. or whatever like that's where i was kind of getting a little confused because uh -huh. i was like trying to figure out how to put that in yeah that's that's the one i had a hard time with okay i'm trying to find i think it was like problem like 34 or something or not 34 is it 34 like 32 or something it was like at the end Tell you what, let's just make something up because I'm not finding it specifically. So it was dealing, converting from what to what? Can you remember that even? Um, the, you don't have the numbers, just the units. So like, yeah, I said like miles per an hour to um, something seconds, millimeters, seconds. I, I don't know offhand, but like a problem like that, basically. That's what I'm asking. Uh, let's see, miles per hour to, uh, you want to you say millimeters per second? Yeah, 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 let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna convert from miles per hour to millimeters per second, okay? Okay. I'm going to make a roadmap. I'm gonna go from miles to kilometers to meters to millimeters. Yeah. And I'm gonna go from hours to minutes, to seconds, okay? Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, with the roadmap, like putting it out like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so let's, So 60 miles per hour. We're gonna go from miles <laughs> to kilometers, kilometers to meters, meters, to millimeters, hours to minutes, and minutes to seconds. Okay? Okay. 
Now let's see, I've got to find, I'm going to have to switch to a different assignment. Uh, let's see here. Hang on. This is going to miles is 1.609 kilometers. Oh, okay. Thank you. 1.609. That, that was the one I was going to have to look up for what this book used. Thank you. So one mile, 1.609 kilometers. Okay. Yeah. One kilometer is a thousand meters. One meter is a thousand millimeters. Uh. One hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. Okay. Okay. Now, I can cross out units of miles, units of kilometers, units of meters, and I have millimeters on top. Uh -huh. I can cross out units of hours, units of minutes, and I have seconds on the bottom. Okay. Now, I'm going to do some reducing just because it's nice and easy. For instance, I can take the 60 and one of the 60s in the denominator and get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now what have I got up on top? I've got 1.609 times a thousand times a thousand times one times one all over one times one times one times a whole bunch of ones over 60. Okay. Uh. And that's going to be millimeters per second. So calculator time, 1.609 times 1,000 times 1,000 divided by 60. And I get 26816 point. And I believe that they had us go out to the thousandth place. What yeah. I'm getting here are sixes. Obviously, it's repeating. So this would be like two thirds. So this is the tenths, hundreds, thousandths. And it said thousandths, right? So this would round yeah. up. So I'd have 26,816.667 millimeters per second. OK. Um, so I get the whole process of why you know, you're reducing and we're going down to millimeters. The part that I'm having a hard time is the beginning, but 60 miles in the hour. So like, is that like basically, so if it's asking in the problem, what does it say, 60 miles per an hour? So basically that's the, the thing we're trying to find the solution for, right? So that would yeah, be in the beginning? It's gonna give you some starting rate. Okay. So some units divided by some non-compatible units. So that, you know, and then it's going to say, change this into something else. Okay. So it's, it's got to give you something to start with and tell you what they want it changed into. They just okay. going to give you the numbers of what you're going to change it into. Okay. All right. I got it now. Okay. Something else. Anybody? All righty. Well, should you change your mind, I'll be back this afternoon at 1.15 with an office hour. Otherwise, just a reminder, there'll be no Zoom meeting this tomorrow morning. If you come into the Zoom meeting because you forgot, you'll see a sign that'll say, no Zoom meeting today, just take your test. Okay. Anyway, and it's due by tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. Once you open it up, the time starts. Just a reminder, the uh, password is capital M and then lowercase a-y-o, so my last name. Okay. Uh, don't wait till 11 p.m. tomorrow night and, and then panic because, oh, I didn't have enough time. You can take it right now if you want. You can, you can always take stuff early. It's uh, taking stuff late. That's the problem. All righty. Well, have a great rest of the day. And uh, I will, if I don't see you in my office hour, I'll see you on Monday. So have a good weekend and hope you do well on your tests. Thank you. See you Monday. All righty.